love God's Word. I can't believe that we get to live now in this time period where we have such easy access to God's Word. Uh, it's just such an incredible blessing. And God, in His Word, says that there is tons of blessings from reading His words and benefits of reading of His Word. And uh, For instance, one says, This is my comfort in my affliction that your Word has revived me. Okay, so there is no greater comfort that we can receive than God speaking to our hearts through his word, right to our pain, um, right to what we're going through. Or uh, talking about, it's a light, a lamp into our feet, a light into our path. So our, our next decisions, it helps us make good decisions to know where we're going, to what the next step should be. And Joshua 1, it talks about how um, his word makes our way prosperous and successful. And that's because there is so much wisdom in God's word. And uh, 2 Timothy, it talks about how it's great for correction and for kind of rebuking us and correcting us and training us and equipping us in the things that God has called us to. There's uh, just really tons and tons of benefits. It encourages us and affirms us, reminds us who we are, tells us what God is like, uh, gives us a glimpse of his heart and character. And uh, it really is a privilege to get to spend time with him and read it. And so I just wanted to share with you how I spend time with God and what that looks like and to give you some tips. And uh, first of all, when we spend time with God, we have to start at a position of humility. We have to start uh, not with the attitude of, I can figure this all out, um, or I totally know God, uh, because really we can do nothing apart from him, right? So we have to start at a place where we say, God, I need you to explain your heart and mind to me. By your spirit, I need you to illuminate my mind and make this make sense. Um, because if that's not the case, then it's not, um, you know, we just can't produce uh fruit uh, without the Holy Spirit. So we need to start at a yielded place. So basically some tips are uh, to read it daily, you know, for it to become a habit. Uh, habits happen if they happen daily. So even if it's a short amount of time every day, that's better than trying to have one giant chunk of time, but failing most days. Uh, so really start small and work your way up. And another tip is to read it systematically. And what I mean by that is reading it um, book by book um, in context. You know, you get the full uh, picture of what's going on. Because what we tend to do is uh, we tend to gravitate towards the verses and the chapters and the books that we really like and that we get a lot out of and that we understand. And we avoid the books that we don't really understand or um, like that much, I guess. And then we end up we end up having this lopsided view of God and what He's done, um, but really He's given us an entire book of the Bible with lots of different little books in the Bible. So, uh, what I like to do is I like to take a book of the Old Testament, book of the New Testament, and I just go back and forth until I have the whole Bible read. And for me, I take a chapter a day, and I just soak in. Uh, I read. And I'll, I'll talk about the journey of reading through the, that chapter a day. But read it systematically. And, and a thing that that will do for us is it will keep us from the Ouija board effect, trying to just open up the Bible and kind of um, point woo, point at, at a verse. And that'll be our verse for the day. Because that's not really, um, that leads to a lot of really not great things uh, in misinterpreting it and stuff. For instance, say what if you read and pointed to uh, Judas hanging himself right after he uh, had, you know, betrayed Jesus. Well, that's crazy. I mean, you're not going to apply that. That's not obviously a, a verse that God would point out for you um, out of context. So uh, to keep us reading things in context, we have to read it systematically. It's very helpful to do that. Another one is to keep a journal close by. Um, so when God does show you things, you can just jot it down and uh, then you can go back to it. But also when you write things down, it helps you process it in a different way and helps you remember it. Uh, so I also like to write out my prayers because it keeps me focused. And another thing I like to keep right by me is my to-do list. Uh, because for me, at least, uh, 
every day, without fail, there will be at least five or six things that, that pop into my head that I just have to do. And so instead of being controlled by the tyranny of the urgent and having to do it right then, I just write it on my to-do list and it'll be there when I'm done spending time with the Lord. So that just allows me to be undistracted. And that's a, another tip is to find an undistracted place where um, you're not going to be, there's not a TV on, there's not, um, you know, kids trying to get at you or roommates or whatever. Um, so a quiet place where you can be fully alert and, and undistracted. And... Um, Let's see, our quiet time, our time with the Lord is really like a journey that starts in our eyes and moves through our heart into our hands. And what I mean by that, starting in our eyes, is that where that's where we start seeing. Uh, that's where we need to observe the scripture. So, for instance, um, I just started Mark again, and I love it. I am getting so much out of it, and I'm just amazed at God, like how... How can we read the same thing over and over and over, yet he causes something new to stand out all the time? I mean, that is just mind-blowing that he does that. I mean, what a gift that um, that we can read the same thing again and again and never have it get boring or dull or think, oh, I, I know all that, because there's always something new. If you have a teachable heart, there's always something new that God can show you out of something. Um, so I just started Mark. So say I take a chapter at a time, first chapter, I just write down uh, the verses that pop out at me in my journal, and then I start asking a ton of questions. So you try to see as much as you can. Okay, so that might take putting yourself in the scene, you know, what, and asking yourself, what would I be thinking? What would I be feeling? What would I, how would I react if somebody said that to me? Um, or seeing who's there, why are they there, how did they get there, when did they get there. Uh, it's just seeing as much as you can. And just when you think that you've seen it all, just keep looking because there's always more to see. Uh, so that's where it starts is seeing, observing as much as you can. And then our journey moves into the heart. And that is the point of interpretation. And basically what this means is it doesn't mean what does that mean to you and what does that mean to me. Um, but it actually means arriving at the author's intended meaning. That's what interpretation is. Because any work of art, the author uh, was trying to make a point. They have something to say, and you want to try to understand that because it's their work of art. So scripture is God's. It's his. He wrote it. He has a point. He has something he wants to say. We can't put our own words in his mouth, right? So um, some basic rules of interpretation or helping us arrive at the author's intended meaning, is that we need to interpret the Bible um, grammatically. Uh, follow the basic rules of grammar, you know, which mean interpret it literally unless it says to do something different. Like instead, if it uses the word like or as, you know, you know that that's not going to be literal. Um, we also need to interpret scripture in its historical setting. And there are some really great uh commentaries that help you understand the background and the history. For instance, um, the background Bible commentary, I love it, is super good in uh, just telling you what uh, the, the background and the culture of that day. And one of the most basic rules of interpretation is letting scripture interpret scripture. So God can't contradict himself. The God's word does not contradict itself. So you know that if there's 20 verses uh, talking about how we are eternally secure and, uh, you know, things like, I will never leave you or forsake you, those who have given their life to him, or he sealed with sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise, guaranteeing our inheritance. If there's 20 verses saying things like that, and then there's maybe two making it seem like you can lose your salvation, then the basic um, rule of interpretation is of letting scripture interpret scripture is that God's not contradicting himself that we're the ones not understanding those two verses in context um, because the 20 of them are saying this. So let scripture interpret scripture. Uh, and um, another great thing to ask in interpreting is, is it local or is it universal? And is it temporary or is it timeless? Okay, so... Um, 
and, and the way the way that we'll know that is scripture will let us know right then and there uh, if it's meant for all people at all times or if it's not. Uh, for instance, Paul, when he talks about to the unmarried, I wish that you were unmarried like I, you know, and he's talking like that. But he says that nevertheless, um, it is only for those who have been given the gift so that he limits it, that it's not actually for everywhere, uh, everyone at all times. Um, it's just for a select group of people. So uh, let, you know, scripture uh, just be the guide. And um, then in our journey, moving through our eyes to our hearts, into our actions, into our hands, is the application. And this is the part that can be super easy to gloss over because at this point, God's shown you something super cool and it's so exciting and and maybe people start needing you at that point and the house starts getting a little less undistracted. Uh, but basically, this is um, a super important part because God doesn't want us to merely be hearers of the word, but doers of the word, right? It talks about in James 1. And so that takes asking God questions. Through, through this whole journey, it's not this intellectual ascent of um, checking something off a list or doing something. It's a, a journey of asking God questions. So again, at the last part, you're asking, God, why did you bring this up? Why is this part the, ch the part that you chose to stand out for me today? And how do you want me to respond? How do you want me to act? And he'll give you ideas. Um, the thoughts that pop into your mind, just make sure they line up with scripture and, and make a practical plan. Very practical, not just something like, I want to love people more. That's not specific and it's not um, something you can do today because it's kind of like, well, what do, what do you mean by that? So try to get as practical as possible and um, yeah, think through what it would look like to act on it today. So these are some tips. This is what's been helpful for me um, because really this reading scripture, spending time with God is a journey to the heart of God, to the mind of God. It's a gift and um, we could just ask him questions. God, show me your heart. Show God, what does this show me about your heart and character as you're reading? So I hope it's helpful. I'm sure that you have also super great thoughts. So if you wanted to leave me comments sharing your thoughts at beholdingglory.com, I'd love to hear from you. And um, I hope you have a great time spending time with the Lord. Bye-bye.